Hello everybody, how are you all doing today? So today we're going to take a look at Bitcoin Cash. But before we get started, I would like to explain something to a lot of people, okay? So we're going to talk about my favorite person. It's my boyfriend. His name is Elliot Wave. Say hi everybody to Elliot Wave. Hello y'all, how are you doing? Hi everybody, how are you all doing? Elliot Wave says, hi guys, it's my best friend in the whole wide world. Okay, so I want to talk about corrections, okay? So here, as you guys probably are familiar with by now, this is Elliott Wave. This is a basic impulse move up, right? An impulse move up. So we're going to talk about, for example, IOTA. Let's go to IOTA, yeah? So Just as an example, okay, we're just going to call, actually, ETP. ETP is a really good one. So I had to think about that for a second there. We're going to look at these guys right here, okay? Right here. Actually, that might not even be a good one. Okay, hang on a second. I'll be right back. I'm going to look. For... Alrighty. So this is a perfect example right here. So I'm going to draw my Elliott wave here, first of all. And I know a lot of people are extremely worried right now about Bitcoin Cash. So I thought I would make this video to reassure some people. But first of all, we have to understand a lot of the basic concepts of Elliott Waves and how corrections work, okay? So every time, actually that one's way too small. Every time there's a corrective pattern like this, okay, let's say that this is wave one and then wave two is right here, okay? Let's say that we formed officially some sort of ABC correction like this, okay? And then it tries to break out right here. It tries to break out right there to the upside, okay? Sorry for the sound in the back room. background. I always have company over. So right here, every time it tries to do an A, B, C wave there, and it tries to break out to the upside, if it actually fails and it doesn't really break out to how we wanted, this point right here actually becomes an X point, okay? It becomes an X point. And then it does something called an extended correction where it does another A, B, C, like that. Something like that. It could be, you know, very drastically different. And now instead of wave two, where this was originally wave one, and this right here was originally wave two, what ends up happening is wave two was actually extended to over here. Okay. So now what we have is a W, X, and a Y. Okay. And why like this so it's very important to understand this concept as a trader or even as an investor so once again we have a wave one and does an ABC if it fails to break to the upside there then simply what happens is this wave two right here instead of ending here and it fails to break out it gets some sort of extended WXY correction pattern on all right, so now that we have this concept down, we need to apply the same theory of Elliott Wave to Bitcoin Cash. Look at that graph. Look at how many green bars there are. Wow, guys, it shot up right to the sky, then it came right back down. Sorry, sorry, I just got really excited there. Random outburst moments. <laughs> okay, you guys ready for this? All right, so we were all hoping, right? This one here, this one right there, as you guys can tell, it failed, right? This is our wave one. This is our wave two. This is our wave three. This was supposed to be wave four, and we all played that perfectly. But do you guys all know what happened right around this time? Let me show you what happened right around this time to Bitcoin. Now, we need to understand the correlation with market cap and money in the market. So, because there's a finite amount of money, I'm trying to look for Bitfinex, by the way. Because there's a finite amount of money in the marketplace, right? It's not like there's an unlimited amount of money. There's always a very um, limited amount of money. And because there's a limited amount of money in the market, well, we can't just have everything go up at the same time, right? If one goes up, sometimes one must come down. And Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin, they did negative, negatively correlate for a very long time until some things happened. So if we actually make a note of this right here, so let's make a note right here, okay? This is around what, guys? November 24, as we can tell. 
this is when Bitcoin, just a few days ago actually, was around 8,000. And right around this whole range, they negatively correlated pretty well. This whole range right here. Until this point right around there, when lots of money was going up and up and up and up and up and up. Not only that, that guy Roger Ver, he's kind of been making a fool of himself. I don't really follow a lot of fundamental news, but I hear a lot of the gist. He was um, on some guy's like blog, talk show, radio thing on YouTube. And he went off on him about this guy calling um, Bitcoin Cash, B Cash, right? And Roger Ver just went off on him. So, it, you know, it's just a lot of a, a lot of fundamental news is what I'm getting to. That's driving Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash price down. That's not negatively correlating with it anymore. And there's so much behind that. I'm not even going to get into the fundamental news. But uh, Roger Ver is like the most interesting person in a fun and entertaining way to follow. If you guys don't follow him, make sure you do follow him because he is hilarious, that guy. He is like... He's psychotic, like, and I thought I was psychotic, but that guy is like, woo, cuckoo, you know? So 24th, 25th, Bitcoin goes up very heavily. Now let's take a look at Bcash. <laughs> Roger Ver, don't come after me now, big boy. So if you guys take a look, look what happened on the 25th, right? Right around the 24th, 25th there, it tried to break out to start, right? It tried to start, break out to start. It's fifth wave right here. But it failed, guys. It failed. So now it's actually making an extended correction, right? You guys following this concept? Cool, right? Isn't that awesome, guys? So since we're applying the same general rules that I was talking about earlier to Bitcoin Cash, well, guys, Bitcoin went up. Lots of FA, fundamental analysis and news, driving the market to Bitcoin, almost reaching an all-time high of 10,000. So yes, guys, I definitely did my technical analysis right, right? That's why I also had stop losses, if you guys remember, right? That's what stop losses are for. And just as an example, I want to show you guys on my Twitter what I wrote, okay? Let's show you guys the power of stop losses and the way we should actually be approaching them. Give me a second here. I'm just going to find it. So this is what happened, guys. I took a $1,300 loss. That might have been $1,200 loss on Ethereum Classic. Yep, I decided to short it at $26.46 right there, right? And my, my, my maximum stop loss was about $28.30. But I actually cut it short around $28.10 because I saw it going up, right? So yeah, I took a loss, a pretty pretty decent size one to some people or, or small one to other people, right? To me, it was a pretty normal, it, actually to me, it was a big loss because I don't really play these kind of positions. This was like an $18,000 $18, position. And here's a record of all my trades, which you guys are welcome to go through on my Twitter. So I, I, I was racking up my shorts all the way from $25.97 to $26.43, right? And, you know, I'm still racking it up, my shorts, 26, 6, 9, still racking it up, still racking up to 27. And eventually, I don't have the rest of the photos. There's a few more. Actually, no, right here. I cut my losses, 700, guys, 700 Ethereum Classic, which was about, how much was it again? I can't remember. It was 700 coins, $18,000. And right here, I cut all my losses at $28.10. So I want you guys to know that I wrote, this is how I manage risk. I'm 100% transparent. I don't only have winners. I, ha I took a $1,300 loss last night on shorting ETC. Do I care? No, because I made 6,900 total that day. So what's a net profit of $5,600? Like, does it really matter if you lose $1,300 if you're up $5,600 for the day? No, guys, it doesn't matter. So what I'm basically getting to is that it doesn't matter, guys, if you lose a few trades here and there. What matters the most is you profit over time, okay? The best traders in the world, if they say they have like a 100% win streak, they are lying. If they say they have a 90%, they are lying. I'm now going to be adding my Excel, this one right here to my book, guys. This is going to be a loser. Like, I'm now down for the month. All my trades are transparent, as you guys know, okay? I'm now lost 2 out of 17. 2 out of 17, okay? And now I've only won 15 out of 17. And you guys see my trades all the time here, okay? 15 out of 17. So now I'm 
to five or seven six percent so there you go my win rate this month for what I've shared with the public for the longer term trades guys I'm now down one trade or two trades Neil I've lost and Bitcoin cash I've lost but all the other ones all 15 technical analysis guys that I've shared with you on Twitter and also on YouTube they have all been winners guys look at EOS guys look look at IOTA look at IOTA I don't even have the one here where I was suggesting for people to buy IOTA like I mean look at some of my winners guys this is not me boasting this is trying to get the message across to you guys that it does not matter one single bit okay one single bit guys if you decide to, if you lose a few trades look at my IOTA one I suggested for people to buy at 36 guys and IOTA is a dollar 40 okay now let's look at a few other ones ripple okay let's look at my ripple analysis that I gave for you guys on November 2nd or November 10 here you go here's suggesting for you guys to buy ripple at 20 cents okay and we are now at a quarter guys so do I really care that people have lost or myself I've lost on trades I've lost too on Bitcoin cash I just haven't checked how much I've lost yet you know I've lost to a Neo so what so what that we lose a few trades guys it does not matter in the short term because when you think of the 15 trades that I personally won and I lost two I don't really care at all about the small losses and I'm trying to drill that into people's heads that you guys cannot be little sissies and pansies and have weak hands like that or weak mentalities in general and cry about it okay you guys just cannot have that mentality to be a successful trader I'm not saying I'm successful but what I am saying is I do this full-time and I have the emotional stability not to say that you guys don't but I have the emo emotional still stability because I realize that I win over time and when and losing a few trades it just doesn't matter guys in the grand scheme of things we trade this game like a casino like probability and we try our best to win more over time by managing our risk and our money okay so back to this guys I, I really needed to get that out of the way I do apologize and feel bad I guess that some people have lost money on it but at the same time I also have, I'm starting to be very desensitized because it's honestly on people to learn how to manage their money it is not on people it is not basically on me if people depend on me right to um, oh good Philicons you know he's on a winning streak blah 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 I'm gonna take one of his trades up and then you guys take it and then you don't manage your risk and then you take a loss on it and you don't realize the same concepts that other traders might realize which is we win over time that it's really hard to feel bad for those kind of people that will rely on others to make decisions for them while they put in zero work to develop their risk management skills right not only that this is TA for you guys like I just explained the WXY so because we failed out there okay because we failed this right here we all thought it was right you know this was ABC pretty much right there with a double bottom or truncated one and we all thought guys that this one was gonna make a move up like that right we all thought it was gonna make a move up like that or something okay but did it do it nope it failed and when it fails boom instead of this being ABC what we now have is this right here we're basically having a W an X and a Y something like that does this seem to make a little bit more sense now right I'm gonna draw that in again we have this part as from there that's W that's X and that's Y right and we can even see the ABC correction in here as well right I don't know why that keeps doing that let me just try that again so this is another A that's B and that's C and I would like to get just W X Y W X and Y like that check that out beautiful okay so this is how we look at it guys and it's very important as a trader and how did we know guys that this failed well let me show you okay this is how we know that waves fail and they do fail guys they fail all the time they fail a hundred percent of not a hundred percent but they can fail no problem so we check out this right here and we use a baseline see this line right here that I drew I'm gonna make a really massive line for you this one right there that's the horizontal bluish one see this is the line that determines when 
and if it fails, okay? It almost failed here, didn't quite get to it. Now, I will explain to you Elliott Wave's rule. Wave 2 can retrace up to 99.999999% repeating, okay? If it wave 3 were to start, but if at any moment, guys, it falls below the point of this line right here, okay? If it falls below this point right here, then now this does not this is not point 1. The sky actually becomes x like I mentioned earlier, okay? And then we have an ABC correcting pattern there. So once again, if that was wave one where it attempts to break out every single time, and if it fails, like the ETP example that I showed you, and Omize Go has done it so many times, Litecoin has done it, IOTA has done it, so many coins have attempted to start their impulse wave, but they simply just fail. And when they fail, we just call that an extended correction or a double Elliott wave. For example, here, right? They call theirs Elliott double combo wave or there's even a triple one if it fails. Triple ones are rare, but ETP did a triple wave, right? ETP did a triple wave all the way down to $3, guys. What is ETP at now? ETP is at $3.80, right? So don't worry, guys. We just got to get our T down, you know? Just ground it to the pound, uh, ground it to the ground. So I was going to say, I think, pound it to the ground, but it came out completely wrong. So now that you guys have a basic understanding of Elliott Wave and how corrections work, right? So would you guys agree with me that this is still Wave 1, that's Wave 2, that's Wave 3, right? Right here. Now, to reassure some people, what we need to make note of is this right here. Wave 1 only retraced to the 0.5 level. Respectable, respectable, but more so between the 3.82 and 0.5. So it retraced to the more bullish side, right? If you guys remember my, my I, did I make a call for that one? I don't remember. I don't think, no, I don't think I did. I made a call for this one though at 8.51, that I remember. I can't believe I called that one at 8.50 and woo, can't believe it actually hit 8.51, guys. That was some bad, bad ASS stuff. I don't want to get a, uh, like a warning on my YouTube, so I'm going to avoid swearing. Not only that, guys, if I swear, the, the truth why I don't swear anymore in my videos is because I don't get paid the monetized ads, right? And I have monetized ads on all of my videos, and they pay me something like, like they pay me an enormous amount. YouTube pays a ridiculous amount. I think, I think for each hour of video that I put in, I'm getting something like a quarter, like, a quarter for every time a thousand people watch it. So, you know, for 4,000 people watching, I think I get like a dollar. It's like, whoa, YouTube, you're amazing. You're gonna give me a whole loony? Wow, what am I gonna do with the loony? Am I gonna like buy four gumballs with this? It's like a lot of, so that's the reason why I don't swear in my videos. Okay, guys? <clears throat> so now we see that this one retraces to the more bullish side at the 382. Now we're just gonna do a little bit of analysis. Now, because this, let me show you guys. I'm so excited to show you guys some Elliott Wave. You guys should always be enthusiastic. Every time it's lesson time, it's lesson time with Sir Mr. Fibonacci. So if this one right here retraces to, oh, is my, yeah, it's recording, to 3A2, this one right here, then what we will automatically assume is that the next wave could possibly retrace more, right? In fact, it could retrace almost to the territory of wave one. Remember we were talking about that rule earlier? Well, same rule applies. It doesn't matter where you are in the subwave, right? So wave four could retrace up to right here, right? But if it fails, if it fails entirely, well, then we're going to get a really, really extended correction, which we really hope we don't get. So anyways, so... So wave four, we will assume that we'll retrace more than 3A2, possibly up to this point there. So we use a general range of right here, 3A2 to where point one began. So this is how we're using a series of deductions, okay? So we're just going to make a big note here, 1400 right there, okay? 1400 right there. We could retrace. And we're going to use Fibonacci retracement tool from the lowest point there to right there. And what you guys notice, right? Where this is, this one retraced to the three, two, to the five, one level. But what do you guys notice? This one is still retracing right now, right? This one's more in the three, two area. Where's this one more? 
this one's more in the 0.5 area. So is our deduction right? Absolutely. Is that a good buy zone? Absolutely, it's a good buy zone. And we're gonna go over why. So now we're, 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 we're on track, guys. We're on track according to technical analysis to still make an uptrend, okay? We're still on track right now to start wave five. And it's not like much has changed. The targets, believe it or not, are all the same still. I mean, the target here is still like this one we exceeded it already to the middle of between 100 and 1618. And my target's still the same, guys. My target's still somewhere in there up to $2,000. I'm seeing that very firmly that just because we retrace $100, it doesn't mean that the targets are really that changed, right? So let's say that we took our Fibonacci extension, just made a box somewhere around here, right? Actually, I'm gonna go conservative. I'll go to 2,000-ish, to 21. And let's say I actually did Fibonacci extension from where this wave started to where it ended right there. Perfect, it matches still to a one-to-one -one extension. We're still looking at like a, a little bit under or over 2000, just around this range here, 1950 to 2050, around there, guys. So I hope this TA is making a lot of sense when I'm using deduction to reassure you guys that I'm still very bullish on this. I'm not, I'm not really that bearish on this, guys. Like, you know, it's, I can't be bearish when it's fitting all of my criteria. Not only that, you guys need to take a look at the RSI. It's like definitely leveling out here, right? It's actually peaking up now. So this is on a four-hour chart too, guys, right? This is on a four-hour chart right now. And if you guys look on this chart right there that's forming on the three four-hour chart, even though it's only one hour in, like we're, getting, we're probably going to end up getting a doji in there. Look on a daily. We're gonna get a, okay, that's daily is not a good one. Actually, that's a great one. We only got like one hour before the daily finishes, guys. That's a crazy powerful reversal candle. Actually, I don't know what time the daily closes. Do you guys know what time the daily closes? If I think the daily closes in two minutes, right? Yeah, so if it closes like that, that's a strong candle, guys. On the three hour, two hours left on it, that's a strong reversal candle. On the two hour, one hour left on it, that's a strong candle. One minute left, that's a really strong candle, okay? We, when we see candles like that at the, on the very bottom, right, like right here, you know, right there, they reverse. Whether it's in the form of a hammer, they reverse. Whether it's in the form of a small hammer, they reverse. Whether it's in a big hammer, they reverse, right? This one here was not quite good because this was right around the whole Bitcoin thing rally as well. But Bitcoin's almost at $10,000. $10, There's only so much more money that can be pumped into the market, right? Inverted hammer. Inverted hammer right there. Let me show you guys what an inverted hammer is. Right there, guys. Inverted hammer. I'm not just making this stuff up. This is called an inverted hammer, right? Inverted hammer. Every time we see an inverted hammer, it goes up. Inverted hammer, you know, these are just examples from Google, right? And what do you guys see right there on this chart? This is on the 45 minute chart. That's an inverted hammer, right? Look at an inverted hammer right there, guys, okay? So depending on what where they are, I mean, look guys, we're getting a higher high already. It went so low yesterday, like it dipped so low on the 45 minute chart. Look at this right there. It's a bullish RSI divergence, right? It dipped there as well, bullish RSI divergence. Yeah, it's looking really good. I mean, if I draw this in here, it's probably gonna be some weird shape right now. Like it's a channel, right? This is a channel. And guess what, guys? Channels are meant to be broken, okay? If boots are made for walking, then channels are also made to be broken. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, eh, I really want to count the channels like that. But it is a channel regardless in the RSI. And guys, it's just a matter of time. I, I don't, you know, I apologize, sort of, that I got the last TA wrong. But, you know, I can't predict all these things. But what I can be sure of is that I'm going to stick to my lo stop losses and I will win over time no matter what, okay? And, you know, is it, and I don't mean to sound 
sound rude when I say this, but is it really my responsibility to make the right prediction? <clears throat> or is it more so your responsibility to learn the technical analysis, right? A lot of people were pooping on me on YouTube. I had to delete so many comments. A lot of people were, well, you know, it got to the point, I'll tell you guys this, okay? It got to this point that my Facebook was in one of the videos for like a weekly summarizing one and people were literally contacting me and it was an honest accident where I went on my personal Facebook, which I won't be adding anyone because it's for family and friends. Not that you guys aren't family and friends, but there's a there's a big line where you demarcate between, uh, between personal and uh, professional, right? So because I put in my dash, like my weekly summary video once, people actually went to my Facebook page and we're saying some pretty nasty things to me through private messages just so they can directly message me. So that's why I was a little bit shaken up, not shaken up, but a little bit distraught, I guess, that people actually had the audacity to do that. So now it's like I've adopted this I don't care attitude that's like my trading, right? Just tough as nails that I just don't care anymore about being right because I just share my thoughts in these technical analysis videos, right? And if people don't spend the time to learn the TA that, for example, I know or that other people know or that all people should know, then it's not really my fault, guys, if you guys are just expecting fish to have thrown at you. I'm here to share my thoughts and as smart people that we all are, it's our job to have intel, okay? It's called gathering intel, okay? When you gather more intel, you can formulate your own opinion, right? And eventually, maybe you'll have like a consensus on the on the market, like amongst your friends and so on, right? If you collaborate enough and you formulate an opinion. It's like reading multiple newspapers, right? It makes you wiser because you now have perspectives from many different people, right? So if you guys are just depending on me, for example, for, your, for the charts and to be right all the time and you don't know stop losses and you don't know how to read a chart for the life of you, I hope you guys lose all your money because life is not all about having fish thrown at you. It's about putting hard, hard work and dedicating an immense amount of time. So what kind of person am I? I'm the kind of person that really dislikes lazy people, put it that way. I'm lazy as heck myself, you know, I'm super lazy, but when it comes to my own profit and my own self-development and my own learning, I will put in so much hard work. And that's why you guys see me on the computer 16 hours a day, 17 hours a week. I do not go out. And that, my friends, is what you call commitment. So I'm counting on you guys to take this as a harsh lesson if you lost, okay? If you, if you lost on Bitcoin Cash because of my analysis, take this as a really tough and hard lesson from whatever you guys call me, your teacher. Your, some people call me teacher. It's like, ah, I'm not my dad. I'm no teacher. But, you know, if you guys are taking my advice and you're learning from me, take this as a very hard lesson to know that you need to put in the time to develop your skills and hone them over time because they're very important. So, guys, why am I bullish on this? I'm going to show you guys, first of all, back to this, okay? This is why I have no friends in real life. <laughs> I give it to my, I do have friends in real life, guys. I just, I just don't see them often because I'd rather trade and it's much more fun. <clears throat> but I am incredibly harsh to my friends and I'm realistic. I don't dance around topics, right? I have very little patience for a lot of topics, especially when it comes to things like this. And I never knew my YouTube would get 7,000 subscribers, so thank you guys. I'll be doing a giveaway really soon. It's going to be a surprise giveaway. You guys have no idea what it is. It could be money. It could be me of a photo in underwear. It could be who knows. It could be me shaving my head. It could be me eating my dog and boiling her for soup. You never know what it's going to be. So stay tuned at 10,000 subscribers where I'm going to do a little special present for you guys. And also 4,500 followers on Twitter. What? What? This is like 11, 12,000 total followers and subscribers in less than like a month and a half. What? So because of how fast people have been following me, etc., right? That's why I'm also developing a really thick skin and that's why you guys must as well. I will be whatever you guys call me, okay? You're a Sifu, you're, you're a teacher, whatever you guys call me. You guys also have to respect the fact that I will be very harsh on you because I believe in tough love, okay guys? You guys see my dog, Luna? I beat her to death until she learned how to sit, until she knows how to speak. How do you guys think I taught her how to speak so well on demand, huh? Huh? Tough love, guys. Tough love. So 
less than time. We got two candles right here, okay? We got two candles like this on a one hour chart, okay? Because we are going up, right? We bought up, 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 and then we're going down, right? Would you guys agree? Up, up, then we're going down. If this was actually on a two hour chart, because two one hour candles make a one two hour candle, right? So two, sorry, I said it wrong. Two one hour candles on a two hour chart, it makes one candle, right? So we have to keep this in mind. And what will it look like on a higher time frame? It will actually just look like that, okay? Because it went from up to down, it'll just show the bodies that overlap because it went up to down, only show as a wick poking up like that. Now, if this one was actually reversed, right? If, if it was reversed, right? We would be going from down, 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 and up, 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 right? So because we went from down to up, only the body shows and then the wick would be at the top, okay? So that is a lesson. Now another lesson is this right here, okay? Now a lot of people might draw their resistances like this, right to the wick. Yes, that's absolutely acceptable to draw your supports and resistances just like that for all time lows of it breaking. But what a real real resistance really is, is where it had a lot of trouble breaking that specific point and it bounced from that area. Now, it didn't bounce from there, guys. That is just the lowest point that it got. It really bounced from right here, right, on these candles, if you see. So there's a very clear line for how we draw with the wick and without the wick, when to include it and without to include it, right? So sometimes wicks can absolutely poke through the resistance or it supports, but it doesn't mean you should be drawing it right there. Remember the lesson time that I just showed you guys earlier? Check this out right here. What do you guys notice, huh? What do you guys notice? Look at this on the one hour candle. Here's where the body is, but because it overlaps like that on a higher time frame, all you see is a wick, guys. All you see is a wick, right? Look. All you see is a wick. So if I drew something like that, and then I drew another one, let's delete this right here, and I drew another one, just like that, coming down, check out what it looks like on a better time frame. Look at that. What does that look like to you guys on this time frame? So a lot of people might not know how to draw it like that, and they'll be like, they'll draw it like this, right? That's not really right either. The best way to draw it is like that, guys. Check that out. On this time frame, it looks even better. This one looks really good. Look at this one on a four hour, okay? This one looks beautiful. Right around here, just like that, guys. Do you guys know what shape this is? Do you guys know what shape this is? Right? So I'm drawing it to combine multiple time frames, right? Multiple time frames. So I'm drawing one like that, but these overlap, these overlap as well, and this point here. And then when you get to a different time frame, it looks beautiful, guys. We can even draw it something like that even. Now, let me show you guys what this shape makes, okay? First of all, we're gonna go to the bullish scenario. Usually we get five touches like that, something like that, one, two, three, four, and five. And then it breaks downwards, guys, it breaks down, okay? And the way it breaks down is we take a base range of the wedge, so we just take a little box inside of it like that where the EMA is, and then we target right around there like that. Now for the other side, if it was falling, like how we see on Bitcoin Cash, we draw it this way. We draw it one, two, three, four, and five. And what we do is we take the base range of the wedge again. Okay, then we put it right here, and then we use this as a target, okay? So, I hope you guys aren't, aren't like upset with me or anything, you know, or dislike me, blah, 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 for, for me being, you know, kind of harsh about some things now. I just want to make sure that we are all on the same level, right? And we definitely, if we want to be traders, I will put into perspective something for you guys. Trading is a competition. Not only is it a competition, guys, but it is a fierce competition. And there are many brilliant people in the world who trade. We're talking brilliant with IQs that are just ridiculous, okay? 
But what set, what, why do some brilliant people fail in trading? It's because, well, they don't know how to manage their emotions. They may not know how to control risk as well, right? And they don't know how to control their greed. Now, the most basic emotions in trading is fear and greed. And because fear and greed can overwhelm us, the most intelligent people in the world sometimes can't control that aspect, right? And, you know, fear and greed, it ties in with risk management. What we try to do is we try to toss out risk management out the window and it gets replaced. Or sorry, we try to toss out emotions out the window and they get replaced with with um, with risk management. As you guys can see through my tweets, I don't worry. I don't panic, guys. I don't ever panic. All I do is I do TA and I believe in my skills as a, for my risk management aspect. And I just make sure I stay true to my game plan, right? It's like a it's like a basketball game or any sports game. You have a strategy, you go in, you have a contingency plan as well. Those that don't have a backup plan for when things go south, you will get destroyed in the market. Do you guys know why you will get destroyed in the market? Where do you think the money comes from, guys? Where do you think the money comes from when you win? It comes from other people losing. When people lose, where do you think that money goes? It goes to someone else who just took your money. This game is about taking each other's money, believe it or not, because the money has to come and go somewhere. Now, I want to put this into perspective for you, okay, guys? I, like, you are playing against some really smart people out there who are pretty good, you know, in general traders. And if you guys don't make sure you improve your skills every day, you never know. Guys like me will destroy you in the market maybe. You know, and that's not boasting or being being cocky about it. This is just stating a fact that I, I, I trade full time and I do it all right. You know, there's many, many people in the world who are brilliant and I'm sure a billion times better than I am, right? But if you guys respect what I'm doing for work and you do respect my analysis as well, you can't just lean on me entirely for it because my job as well is to take your money, believe it or not. You know, as, as harsh as that sounds, right? We're all competitors at the end of the day, right? So I hope that puts into perspective for you how fierce the competition is, right? So I'm going to show you guys um, EOS, sure. I'm going to show you guys EOS, okay? What, when I take a look at something, you guys might have even seen this before already. This is on a four-hour chart. This is on the four hour chart right here. Right there, okay? I'm gonna draw, this is the wedge, right? We can all agree that this is basically a wedge. I will draw it like that as best as I can. I will draw another wedge like that, touching the most relevant points that I see. I will now draw a box inside of it, right around here, make sure it's a nice pretty little box like that. I'll draw it right around here. That might have been a little bit too much. Trust me, this is going to pay off. You guys put in the time to make sure the small little things like how I'm doing in here, like drawing the box right, it pays off. Ready? Put it right there at the ledge. Draw a horizontal ray. And what do you see? What do you guys see? You guys see a perfect baseline target. Want to see another example? Okay. Want to see another example right here before it broke out? I'm going to show you. Watch. I draw my wedge in here to the highest point for this one. Actually, I'll just go a little bit lower. Just so You guys already know it broke out. Okay. I take the highest point of the wick. I draw my box in here. I'll always shoot somewhat conservative. I drag that box over here. First target, what do you guys see? Pretty cool. It hit the exact target range at the top. Exact. That's two examples, guys. And it just came up with on the top of my head. Well, not came up with, but they're real examples on EOS. Oh my God, so many green candles, guys. Bitcoin Cash, Bcash, it's shooting up to the sky. Somebody shoot it down with the crossbow. Wow. Sorry, I just, I, I break out into, I, I'm a weird guy, guys. I'm a weird dude. So you guys are going to have to tolerate me if you guys want to keep seeing my analysis here, okay? So I really do feel honestly bad for like, for this whole Bitcoin cash thing and whenever I'm wrong, 
but at the same time, I'm just starting to slowly understand that there are lots of people who just will not put in any type of work. Maybe I'm just an optimist at heart, guys, where I believe that everybody will put in an arduous amount of work, right? Lots of hard work lots of hard work and put in the same type of effort that I come to expect everyone to. But I'm also realizing that everyone will not, right? And those are the people that I really wish I could help more. But unfortunately, there's not much I can do sometimes, guys. And that is a sad fact of life, right? Sometimes we can't help those that just don't want to be helped. And the people that lost money that actually contacted me on Facebook, F you guys, okay? Just give you a, a big F you, blocked you guys immediately. And on, on a Twitter as well, when I found out who you guys were, that's just not that's just a no-no where you come onto my Facebook and you start yelling at me because of me losing money. That's just like the most wrong thing to do, guys. Like, you know what I mean? Sorry, so that's why I got a little bit upset about Bitcoin Cash there over the past few days. Neo wasn't as bad, I have to admit, that was my first loss. It wasn't that bad. People slowly understood it, right? But Bitcoin Cash, because more people invest in that coin, whew, it was it was it was a fairy dealing with that. So now that we have our wedge, I know I'm I'm talking about this topic a lot, guys. I know. So now that we have our wedge clearly drawn there, let's try to make a decent one. Let's be a more conservative approach. Maybe one inside. One, two, three, four, five-ish. Yeah, around there. So let's go more conservative approach to just kind of try to get a round number-ish. It's going to break out a little bit. Don't know how much. Let's say it broke out right here. <laughs> this is the only target I can give you guys for now. About 15, 15, 15, 1600 at the most, we can say. Let's take a more up, uh, bigger range here. Yeah, we're looking at about 1600 ish. We'll say 1600. Round number, guys. So if this one attempts. To break out to wave three right because this was one two three and this is now four with a w x y hey guys i honestly have no idea where we left off because i was gone for like 15 minutes to make to just make a small video for my live trading video series if you guys don't know i also created a live trading um series as well just to capture some of my trades and um what you guys might know about me is that i'm a scalper right i take advantage of volatility and i just do a lot of liquidation um liquidity and volume calculations in my head and i take advantage of small or big price movements in short time frames such as the one three and the five minute charts especially and you guys have might you might have seen on my tweets as well that um you know i do it pretty well i'd say you know there's some hours where i can make up to six hundred dollars an hour there's some days where i can make up to five thousand dollars in the past two days, I'm at $9,500 now. And the cool thing is I actually tweet every single one of my profit and my loss on Twitter, guys. So I'm 100% transparent. Just like how I showed you guys my ETP loss, right? So today I'm up about $6,000 and I'm creating a live video series that I will just be, it, they're not all going to be included. Don't get me wrong. Like not every single trade, right, is going to be included, but the majority of them will be included that I can remember. So if, now back to Bitcoin Cash. Look at this, guys. We're getting a doji that's forming right here. That's going to be the final candle that's going to form. This one wasn't strong enough, but this one is most likely going to be strong enough and we're squeezing so tight to the wedge. So, guys, that's where I think we stand. We might break out to about the 1600 range. And for all we know, after this Y ends right here, okay, after that Y ends, what I think might happen, don't get, you know, it's, Take it with a grain of salt. We have this conversation, guys. Take it with a grain of salt, right? That could be two. This could be four. And we can finally make our final fifth wave. That could be it right there. This is not it. Trust me. That's a W. It needs to be roughly the same. So that one, we will talk about it, first of all, after this breakout. So I just want to let you guys know the concept behind a falling bullish wedge, which breaks to the upside and where we currently are and what the heck has happened, guys. And I want you guys to know as well that uh, for Bitcoin Cash, like I, I shed some of my my positions, but I still hold Bitcoin Cash too, guys. I bought Bitcoin Cash at 16.25. I shed some of it. I bought more at 15.75 and 15.50, right? And I just happened to put up some buys in here at 15.50, and I even put some buys at 15.75. So they happen to get filled because I just plan for the worst case scenarios where things are going to go very low. And surely enough, it did go low, but you know, I, I got my position filled, 
my average price reduced a little bit. So I'm still in a fairly good position right now. I'm, I'm going to be holding these ones for more so a swing term. I do everything, guys. I scalp 90% of the time, but I also day trade, right, where I'll hold positions for a long time, like a few hours, that is. And I will also swing as well, where I'll hold positions for a few days. So I take advantage of every single time frame as much as I can. I'm quite greedy when it comes to trading. And because I trade 16 hours a day, I can actually do this, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this Bitcoin Cash video update. I hope you guys have learned a valuable lesson for some of your losses because you guys, you guys, you know, on a positive note, <clears throat> on a positive note, okay, you guys have to take these lessons as a very valuable learning experience because the best lessons in life are from losses and from where we're struggling, right? If you were always successful and things were always going good, right? You would never learn how to develop an instinct for when things are going bad. So like, you know, let's just use an example of people that might be at a bad position in their life, right? If they're in a bad position in their life, well, they know where they were before and then they, they know where they are. And when they do get to a better position, they know where they don't want to be, right guys? Does that make sense? So if you guys take these losses as a very valuable learning experience, only positive things will come out of this at the end. I promise you, only really good things will come out of this at the end, all right? So please, please see this as a very good thing. Now, I don't know when this is going to break out to the upside. I have no idea, okay? For all we know, it gets squeezed really, really low. It can get squeezed to even like 1400 or something. But what I do know is that it's not going to get squeezed to 1402-ish, right? Or not 1402, to this line right here. Whatever this one is. 1379-ish, right? That's kind of the lowest it can go. If it does go lower than 1380-ish, then the whole thing fails, guys. And there's something fundamentally wrong with this. So as a technical analyst, this is what I look for. I look for key modes of failure, just like an engineer. I'm an engineer, mechanical, and I look for modes of failure, right? And in a chart, I see it no differently at all. This could be one of the modes of failure of fundamental analysis that could be literally just driving down the price. For all we know, Bitcoin could hit $12,000. That could be another major factor why this falling bullish wedge will not break. So we have to take everything into account, guys. Just because I say it's a falling wedge right now that it's bullish doesn't mean 100% it's going to break up. I'm just giving you guys scenarios right here, okay? Just, I'm just covering my behind as well, right? For all the people that are angry, which I really don't care about. Honestly, don't care. I find it more comical than anything. It definitely rubbed me the wrong way and you know, it got me going a little bit. But when I when I really had that cigarette, you know, when I had, went outside and had a cigarette, I realized I know I'm doing something awesome for the community and I know it's helping a lot of people but I can't help the people that don't want to help themselves. So in, in turn, it didn't really made me feel bad and more so just lots of self-reflection, right? So we all, for all we know, guys, this could get squeezed super far, super far, all the way to even 1300. For all we know, it could break down entirely. Never know. For all we know, way four could go down to here. For all we know, there, there's not even a way four and this whole thing this whole thing broken down and it just made another huge extended correction part of all of wave two right so so there are many 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 things right now that's going on that we all have to take this into consideration okay guys so i just want to give you my thoughts for the people that lost money once again sorry too sad too bad okay you snooze you lose put in the time study and take it as a valuable learning experience as well okay guys sorry to be harsh not sorry just kidding. Have yourselves a great night, guys, and take care now.